Okay. Um, things I know. We're trying to find a volume. So if I'm trying to find a volume, I already know I'm thinking partial credit. My volume is an area times a thickness. We're revolving around the line y equals 2. So the line y equals 2 is this kind of a line. And our cross sections are always going to be perpendicular to what we revolved around. So if y equals 2 is this kind of a line, and my cross sections are perpendicular, then my cross sections will have a thickness of dx. So now I can go one step further. I know that I'm going to have an area and a dx. OK, it's about as far as I can get without really drawing a picture. Our region is the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 2 minus x, and x equals 0. y equals x squared, 2 minus x, and x equals 0. OK, I already wrote a, wrong, a bad problem because there are actually two regions that are bounded by those three functions. So let me fix my question and say that we're in the first quadrant. Now that we're in the first quadrant, I know we're not talking about this region over here. We're just talking about this little piece. OK. So I've got y equals x squared, y equals 2 minus x. And I know that we're revolving that around the line y equals 2. So now I have to kind of place y equals 2 in here. Since y equals 2 minus x is the equation of our line, and that 2 is our y-intercept, this right here must be y equals 2. So that's the line that we're spinning around. I'm going to draw in my arbitrary cross-section. So I'm going to draw in a little slice in the region that we care about. Now I can see, with this as my arbitrary cross-section, if I spin this around the line y equals 2, it won't be sort of solid. This is going to have a little bit of a hole in the middle when I spin that around, which means when we set up our volume, my volume is going to look like pi of a big radius squared minus pi of a little radius squared. Um, next thing to figure out, let's figure out the big radius, little radius. And I chose a problem that's going to be slightly messy. Um, I did that on purpose. So our small radius, I start at the middle, or what I'm spinning around, and I go until I hit the closest edge of our cross section. So that distance right there is my little radius. Well, to find that, I actually need to notice that this entire height is y equals 2. And to get that little height that I'm looking for, I'm taking the y equals 2 and subtracting off the y value from the line. So this entire height is a height of 2. And if I were building up to this line, the height would be 2 minus x. So the part I'm looking for for that small radius is 2 minus the height of the line. Now I'll go to do the big radius. Similar thing is going to happen when I look at the big radius. This large, this entire height is 2. And to get to 
the large radius I'm looking for, I'm taking the two and subtracting off that little bit of height that I would be getting from the y equals x squared curve. So that larger radius is two minus the height of the x squared curve. Next thing I have to figure out are those limits of integration, which means I need to know this intersection point. In the interest of time, I will do it super quick. I've got x squared is equal to two minus x, which I think I made something that factors. I'm looking at x plus two, x minus one, great. That's a one. So each of these integrals, if I think about those arbitrary cross sections, I'd be taking them as far to the left as zero, and they come as far to the right as x equals one.